how an, an arts program can re help remedy some social problem or ill. How can impact assessment information augment these types of measures? Well, you know, I'd actually, I'd wonder if you think that's true, what you just said. Um, hmm. um, yes and no. Um, uh, I think impact uh, assessment, we have to just look at the dollars that are there and, and the numbers that are served in that particular program. Um, and um, it's something that we sort of, we talk about uh, in our own sort of working in the community and looking at arts organizations and then those organizations doing art programs and how, what their mission is and how the arts fill into that and what the impact, in other words, if it's a neighborhood community center, um, they, they're going to do a lot of things. But what portion of that art brings those community center people in to X so that we can understand uh, better how the dollars are better served? Right. Right? I think, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, in the conversations that, that we've been having across the country, both with arts organizations and with funders, often what it comes down to is that um, a lot of fine arts, um, museums excluded, but you know, fine art music, um, you're talking about dance that's place-based, you're talking about theater that's place-based, and you can only reach so many people. It's a confined number of people, um, it's a confined period of time, it happens at a specific moment, there are all sorts of other barriers that have been thrown up over time and, and continue to be thrown up that, that make it so that um, at the end of the day, conversations about how many people we reach um, are, are actually really can be very problematic if that's the only thing that you talk about. Because the honest truth is that it's not a very good argument for the value of arts in a community. Um, the other part of it is that, you know, the economic argument doesn't really make a whole lot of sense if you look at it in the largest way possible. So we say that we generate millions and millions of dollars in any given community. But overall, um, you know, it's something like 0.02% of the GDP is is created by the arts in America. And so in that way, that's not, it's just not as, as powerful an argument to have. And yet, it's the reality that we work from. And so where we come from is this idea that if you're interested in working with numbers and you absolutely need to include the economic indicators and you need to include your attendance information and you need to include your community impact information, you should also be including your impact information so that it's part of the conversation that you can have. And if there's a particular legislator or a particular funder that finds that more appealing than these other things, then they have the tools to raise, to raise that up. And I think we need those tools because we're the ones that's engaging with those donors that have the financial dollars. Yes, those donors come and sit or uh, view or listen to art, but when we're engaging for future funding or endowing for the future, it's nice for us to have information that we can show sort of that what we see the impact of art in our own community. They listen to the community foundation or funders in general because we should have that information that we can provide to them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm just seeing, I know we're not supposed to um, talk back to the chat, but Mary Baker, um, the, the, the thing, I think it was you, uh, the thing before this where you were talking about identifying the, the particular impacts of different clusters for different organizations. That's actually really interesting um, to watch happen because, as I said, we have over 60 questions and these, found, these organizations are only allowed to choose 25 of them. And so um, the way that that works is it's sort of like a, a death match that involves the artistic director, the marketing director, and the managing director getting together and saying, which of these things do you care about most? And one of the things that happens in that conversation is that you see which of those clusters matter to different organizations. So for example, we had a small um, theater company in San Francisco called Cutting Ball that does very avant-garde work, and they're very rigorous intellectually. They don't do anything very touchy-feely. And as such, they're not particularly interested in social bonding indicators. I don't know that they would say that out loud, but when you look at the questions that they chose to include in their survey, they're very in interested in things like how the structure of the, how much people notice the structure of the play, how much they intellectually engage with the themes. They're very interested in 
kind of strong emotional response. So how gripping the performance was, how much the performance offended someone. But they're not interested in how much you felt closer to your family. Um, and so in that way, simply by virtue of developing a survey that is entirely drawn out of the artistic product you do, you're actually engaging people in a conversation about their mission. And you're having them have a conversation about which aspects of art are they most trying to put forward. And um, if they do it correctly, then they're able to see really strongly how their mission is directly connected with the work that they do. Which is neat. Okay, so to continue with um, our viewers' questions, um, first of all, are we going to have access to the PowerPoint? <clears throat> yes, this, this uh, web seminar is being recorded, and there will be a link to it online, so you will be able to access the, the slide presentation. And I will also have that to distribute by email if that's the way that you choose to um, get it. Um, what instruments do you, did you use to get responses? So the real quick answer there is that for this study, we used in-venue paper surveys. Um, the reason we did that is that we were particularly interested in getting responses both from the people who bought the tickets and the people who came with the people who bought the tickets. Um, we've, they do have kind of categorically different response levels. The people who buy the tickets are more impacted than the people who come with them probably simply by virtue of the fact that they have more knowledge of the show before they come in. They've made a more conscious decision to come than the person who comes along with them. Um, in the future, the new tool that we have developed that we're making available to arts organizations across the country is email-based. Um, that's in order to keep the cost down. Um, it dramatically reduces the cost to be able to do it digitally. And we've also built a technology that actually pipes the digital responses directly into an online dashboard so that people can see responses within 24 hours of pa patrons starting to put them in. Um, there's all sorts of pitfalls there, but, but um, in terms of cost, you can't get any better than doing it digitally. OK. And besides plays, has the intrinsic impact, ha has it been evaluated in other media, such as an art class, a festival, a museum visit? Uh, so it has, impact assessment has been used in other genres. Um, uh, so far, they're all presentational genres. So dance, music, um, and opera have all done smaller or larger scale impact assessment work. This impact assessment, variations on this work have been done in England and Australia as well as here in the US. Um, the other two that you mentioned, the music class and the community event, um, those are hard enough to crack. Uh, in terms of the, the class, depending on the age that you're talking about, um, these questions are somewhat inaccessible for people who are under the age of 16. Um, we did some kind of practice research with some younger people, and they simply don't know how to engage with the questions. And, and just anecdotally, we interviewed um, four um, power patrons or super patrons in the Bay Area as part of creating the book that we published. And um, one of them was an 11-year-old girl. And interviewing her was a, a completely different process from interviewing any of the older patrons that we interviewed because um, she didn't know how to articulate the impact that the art had had on her. She just knew that she had seen Wicked eight times in, in you know, seven years, um, and that she was obsessed with the show. And she had it up on her wall, and she had autographs, and she had kept a green feather from one of the boas that fell off while she was in the front row, and she, she kept it as her most valued possession. She knew all of that stuff, but she had no way of articulating the particular impacts of that work. So that's a, a difficult barrier that we're working on right now. And then as far as community events, there's simply the problem of understanding when someone is engaging in a community event as opposed to passing through, um, ha getting people's information so that you can get them the survey either there or afterwards, um, encouraging them to, to fill out the survey, which often comes out of a, like a feeling of, of loyalty to that particular organization that's putting it on. And often in community events, there's not as much loyalty to that organization, although not always. Um, so those are, kind of, those are things we're working on, uh, but they're interesting problems. Um, so are there any examples or sources to explore the application in visual arts? Uh, so yes. So um, Alan Brown, who, as I said, is the researcher that we commissioned for this work, um, is currently working with the National Endowment for the Arts to develop a, a version of these questions that is applicable across art forms. 
And so that will include visual arts. And I think he's, they're currently being tested in certain visual arts institutions across the country. But we're not involved in that work directly, so I don't know who they are. Um, but they are, the goal of their work is to try and um, create a set of questions that the NEA can then um, push out to all of their grantees within the next few years and require them to assess impact um, with their patrons so that they can then report that information back to Congress. And, and on those surveys, did you say that the, the answers were narrative, open, or were they otherwise? They're both. Um, there are a series of questions that are narrative. Um, most of them are on a scale of one to five. Um, in terms of the, the specific questions, um, often the, the narrative ones are follow-ups to numeric ones. Um, but they're questions like, um, what emotions were you feeling? Did you have any questions? Um, there's, there's a kind of more open-ended, tell us anything you want to tell us question. And what was fascinating, overall, we got a 45% response rate on the survey. We got almost 19,000 responses back, which was about double what we were expecting. And on most of those surveys where they had open-ended questions, people would go on for pages. Um, and they were just, just aching to tell us what everything that they could about their experience. I mean, there were literally people who were writing in the margins. And the, the poor people that we hired to input all of that information had to strain their eyes in order to understand what was being said there. But we cataloged it all, and we distributed it back to the companies. And some of those companies are really diving into that information and, and really enjoying the, the kind of qualitative aspect of that data. OK, well, this, this is going to have to be our last question. Um, it is basically, this person says, great that there is a new innovative way to understand our impact. I am interested in the practical information, samples of the survey specifics, sample questions for impact categories, best methods to generate the information from the general public without creating such an esoteric environment for responses from the masses. How do you get everyday patrons to art articulate his feelings? Yeah, how do you? I mean, I think, so the, the, the quick answer to the first part, how do you kind of get the specifics on this? So um, two things. One is that we did publish a book of all of our findings, including all of these interviews. Um, the book is available on our website, and, and I'm sure Shannon will put out the link for you there. It's theaterbayarea.org slash intrinsic impact. Um, and the other thing to say is that the, the final report for um, Wolf Brown's portion of the study is actually also available for free through a website called intrinsicimpact.org. Um, and then in a larger way, how do you get the everyday patron to, what did you so the everyday patron to articulate their feelings? Um, that's a hard prospect. And for a lot of organizations who don't, who don't want to, for various reasons, um, conduct surveying like this, or who don't feel like it's within their power, or for example, if you're a visual arts organization where it's just problematic doing this type of surveying, one thing that they have been um, more successful at is uh, doing focus groups, where you just ask a few of those open-ended questions. What emotions were you feeling? What unanswered questions do you have? Things like that. And those then can be translated into more useful data after the fact if you've got a good person transcribing the information and you've got the time to actually process what people are saying that way. But often, um, it's very interesting. One thing that we absolutely did not find is any sort of fatigue. People are, um, people are really anxious to tell you everything that they can about their experience. They want to be asked, and they want to understand what impact they have in their responses. And because these questions aren't phrased as, did you like it, didn't you like it, should we do this again, should we not do this again, they're, they're phrased as something that's deeper and more profound, um, people are able to have conversations that, that aren't value judgments, um, that are actually, they're, they're investigating their own experience of the art. And that's, that's really valuable. Uh, well, we have reached the end of our allotted time for the heart of the matter. Um, on screen, you should see the web links to the Intrinsic Impact website referenced um, by Clay, as well as to other links for arts-based research. Um, we hope that this seminar has been a valuable experience for you. And we thank you for your time and attention. We will make this uh, web seminar available as a recording online. And uh, we can send the presentation, the slide presentation, out by email. 
Thank you again, and have a great day. Thank you.